Hi Charlotte, it's Auntie Katie Scarlet. Today we're going to read a story by the Berensteins, and it is called The Berenstein Bears Talk or Learn About Strangers. So hopefully you love this one. And I got this my copy again at the London Public Library. And maybe uh, mommy and daddy can take you to the library so you can take out a book and uh, you can follow along with me next time, maybe. So here we go, about to begin. Enjoy the story. So the Berenstein Bears learn about strangers by Stan and Jaren Berenstein. Ooh, sticky page. Okay, learn about strangers. Caution. Bear country is safe. When every small club there learn, whoop, when every small cub there learns some special lessons from Ma and Papa Bear. There you go, big word. The Berenstein Bears learn about strangers. Okay. Brother and Sister Bear, who lived with their mama and papa in a big tree house down a sunny dirt road deep in bear country looked quite a lot alike. There's brother and sister. Except for the fact that brother was a boy cub and sister was a girl cub. They were alike in many ways. And even though they each had hobbies, brother loved to build and fly model airplanes, sister had all sorts of special interests. They enjoyed many of the same things. Bike riding, baseball, soccer, frisbee, and getting out and enjoying nature. Yet brother and sister were alike. Yes, brother and sister were alike in many ways, but in some important ways they were different. Brother Bear was cautious and a little wary of strangers. Sister, on the other hand, wasn't the least bit wary. She was friendly to a fault. Just about everybody that came her way got a big hello. Hello, butterfly. Hello, frog. Hello, Mr. Truck Driver. Hello, Mrs. Shopper. She says hello to everybody. Brother worried about sister's free and easy way with strangers. Strangers weren't a problem for him. Not talking to strangers suited cautious and careful brother just fine. But friendly to a fault sister was different. She talked to everybody. Hello, hello, hi. Sister said, brother, you're going to have to stop that. Stop what? She asked. Talking to strangers. It's just not a good idea. Why? Why shouldn't I talk to strangers? What harm is there in that? Is there something wrong with strangers? Hmm, said brother, thinking about it for a moment. Those aren't questions for a brother. Those are for a mama or a papa. Sister Bear, I'm glad you asked those questions, said Papa Bear in his deepest, most serious voice. The reason you should never talk to a stranger and never, ever take presents from a stranger and never, ever, ever go anywhere with a stranger is that it's dangerous. What's dangerous about it? She asked, wide-eyed. What can happen? Oh, dear, thought Mama Bear. I do hope Papa can tell Sister about strangers without making everything scary. All sorts of things, said Papa, as she looked at it, or here, look at the newspaper. As she looked at it, her eyes got wider and wider. Here's the newspaper for us. It says, Stranger, brother, st stranger Bothers Cub. Missing Cub Found. Chief Grizzly Questions Stranger. Cub safety meeting. I hope you're paying attention to all this, called Papa to Brother Bear. Yes, Papa, said Brother, looking up from his airplanes. 
When sister asked for a bedtime story that evening, Papa said, of course, I have just the one. It was an old book that Papa had kept since he was a cub. The story was called Silly Goose and Wily Fox. It told how Silly Goose got into a conversation with Wily Fox, and before Silly knew it, what was happening, she found herself in Wily's lair. This is how the story ended. Then there was a snip and a snap, and all that was left of Silly Goose was a few floating feathers and a smile on Wily Faces, on the face of Wily Fox. Can you see him smiling there? So I think we know what happened to that goose and, uh oh. Uh oh. Sister had a hard time falling asleep that night. Her mind was filled with those headlines. There was even one that said, Silly Goose Missing, Wily Fox Questioned. The sound of Brother Bear's peaceful breathing finally lulled her to sleep. Ooh. The next day dawned bright and friendly to everybody but sister. She had spent a restless night, and when she looked out the window, everything seemed like a little strange. The trees seemed to reach for her, and an owl stared at her, and the crows glared. Let's go out and ride our bikes on the village green, said brother after breakfast. But sister didn't want to. Brother was puzzled. The green was bright, busy, friendly place where she loved to play. Well, how about some soccer? But she didn't want to do that either. It wasn't until he suggested frisbee, her favorite game, that she agreed to go along. Before they left, they told Mama they'd be where they'd be. It was a family rule that they never went anywhere without telling Mama or Papa. That's fine, said Mama. I'm on my way to Farmer Ben's for apples. I'll stop by for you on the way home. So the kids are going. The Village Green uh, was the same bustling place it had always been. This is what it looked like to everyone but sister. See the butterfly and the frog and the lady reading and the person with the flowers and the man singing and the balloons. This is what it looked like to her. Today even the frogs and butterflies seemed mean and scary to sister. Ooh, there's a butterfly and there's the frog and there's a very angry looking rabbit. Later, when somebody tapped her on the shoulder, she jumped a mile. Yippee! Even though it was just Mama. How was everything at the village green? asked Mama on the way home in the car. Sister sat in front with Mama and Brother rode in the back with the barrel of apples. All right, I guess, said sister, but there were so many strangers. Later at home, when mama and sister were getting ready to make applesauce, mama said, you know what, papa, you know what, pa what papa told you was quite right. It's not a good idea to talk to strangers or accept presents or rides from them. But, she continued, that doesn't mean that all strangers are bad. Why, chances are there wasn't a single person on that green that would harm a fly, much less a fine little cub like you. The trouble is, well, it's like this barrel of apples. There's an old saying that goes, there'll always be a couple of bad apples in every barrel. That's the way it is with strangers. Cubs have to be careful because of the few bad apples. Look, sister said, 
I found one. It's all bumpy and has a funny shape. Well, it certainly is strange looking, said Mama. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. You can't always tell from the outside which apples are the bad apples. She cut it in half. See, she said, it's fine inside. Now here's one that looks fine on the outside. But inside, it's all wormy. Ugh, said sister. What's up, said brother. A bad apple, said sister. Ugh, double yuck, said brother. Hey, I'm going to go to the meadow to fly my new pusher plane. Want to come? Sure, said sister. I can pick some wildflowers. She felt much better now, more like her old friendly self. The pusher plane was a great success, and the cubs were about to head home when someone drove onto the meadow with a big, beautiful, orange and green model plane. Wait, said brother, I want to watch. It's a radio controlled job. There's brother, he wants to see. Sister went back to picking wildflowers, but before she knew it, brother was talking to the stranger. For that's what he was, a stranger. No matter how big and beautiful his radio controlled job was. She dropped her wildflowers and ran over to them. I'm going to set it up and follow in the car, said the, the stranger was saying. Want to come along? Wow, said brother. And he would have if sister hadn't grabbed his arm and said, Don't you dare. The stranger drove off following his airplane and sister ran home shouting, Brother, talk to a stranger. Brother, talk to a stranger. But it was a big orange and green radio controlled job, said brother. That doesn't matter, said Papa. We have rules about strangers, and they're important. We have rules about tattletales, too, said brother, glaring at sister. Sister wasn't tattling. Tattling is telling just to be mean, explained Mama. And sister was telling because she loves you and was worried. Do you think that fellow was a bad apple? asked brother. Probably not, said Mama. That's right, said sister. Most folks are friendly and nice and wouldn't hurt a fly. But you have to be careful just in case. Speaking of apples, said Mama, how about some of this applesauce I just made? As they sat having a dish of Mama's delicious applesauce, brother and sister thought about what they had learned that day. There was quite a lot to think about. For brother and sister's rules for cubs, let's turn the page. All right, ready for the rules? Brother and sister's rules? First, never talk to strangers. Second, never take candy or any gifts from a stranger. Third, never ever go anywhere with a stranger. Fourth, don't keep secrets from Mama and Papa, especially if someone asks you to. Five, your body is your own personal property and nobody else's business, especially the private parts. When you're real little, of course, Mama and Papa may help you with your bath or in the bathroom. And your doctor is in the body business and will have to examine you from time to time, even when you're not little. Number six, use your common sense. We can't have rules for everything. Common sense is what keeps us safe by telling us what to do in situations that are not covered by the rules. So there's Brother and Sister Bear's Rules for Cubs. The end. <sighs> so, I hope you liked that storybook and you learned a lot about strangers. And if you have any questions, ask Mom 
and ask dad and they'll let you know more. They'll tell you all about strangers and uh, and yeah. Come back for more stories or read this one again with me and uh, maybe mama and papa can take you to the library so you can get some more books and we can read together. And other than that, if you're going to bed, have a good night's sleep and your auntie loves you. Night, night.